All right, guys, so today's lesson is going to be focused on food webs. Uh, so we've reviewed what an ecosystem is, the different organisms that exist in an ecosystem to help it to uh, thrive, and those organisms are dependent upon one another. Uh, we also talked about the food chain, how energy is transferred from the sun to the producers, which create the usable energy for the rest of the ecosystem. And then all of the other living organisms that eat the plants or eat the animals that eat the plants or eat other animals, uh, that is how energy is continued to transfer throughout the ecosystem. However, in ecosystems, there are often many food chains that overlap. And most plants and animals are parts of several chains. And when you draw all the chains together, you end up with a food web. So just, just think about a week of food that you eat. You do not eat the same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day. As living organisms, we like to have choice. And sometimes it, we change up what we like to eat based on our choice. Other times we might change up what we eat based on what is available. Maybe when you're at school, different food options are available than what is available at home. So again, um, because different organisms eat different things, you have multiple opportunities um, for different food chains to be created and for those food chains to then overlap. And many organisms could be eating from the same banana tree. <clears throat> um, so in your ecosystems notebook, you guys are going to be taking notes on food webs today. And what is a food web? A food web is many overlapping food chains that show how energy flows in an ecosystem. So again, you look here at the zooplankton here in this, uh, this looks like maybe a pond ecosystem. The zooplankton um, eats the algae. So your algae would be your producer. Um, zooplankton is eaten by the algae because that's where the arrow goes. And then uh, energy from the zooplankton goes to the minnows and the bluegill when they eat the zooplankton. And then something comes along and either the os and the osprey will eventually eat the bluegill. So the energy will be transferred from the bluegill to the osprey. Uh, the arrows point from prey to predator because remember that the arrows point in the direction in which the way the energy flows. So yesterday, a lot of you guys were telling me some of the things that you knew that an owl might eat or uh, you knew things that a snake would eat, but it wasn't necessarily shown in the food chain. Again, remember that for something to receive energy from something else, it has to be shown in the food chain to where um, like the macrophyte would be your producer here. The aquatic snail eats the macrophyte, and then the bluegill eats the aquatic snail, and later on again, the osprey looks like our tertiary consumer up there, and he is the head of the food chain here, or the head of this food web. So we've got lots of overlapping things. It looks like the bluegill eats zooplankton. He also eats minnows. He also eats aquatic snails. He also eats dragonfly eggs or mayflies. Um, so lots of different options here for the bluegill. And the a food web helps us to track all of those things. So at this time, I'd like for you to take a screenshot so that you can finish your notes on your ecosystems notebook. 